Well, hello everyone, um, and welcome to the Scientix webinar on free libre software and inclusion in school. My name is Marina, and I will be moderating this session. With us today, we have two speakers. We have Jasmina Jejo. Sorry if I don't pronounce this correctly. She's the, the advisor for school development planning in the Ministry of Education in Serbia. And Milena Mlyadinovic, uh, she's a class teacher. She's also a Scientix uh, deputy ambassador. Uh, Jasmine and Milena, they have presented the work on free and libre software and inclusion in schools during the second national conference on free software in education held in January 2016 in Sremsli Karlovic in Serbia. Sorry again for my, um, I'm assuming, bad pronunciation. Um, and they will present this evening's topic over the following 45 minutes. For the remaining 15 minutes after day presentation, they will be wel welcoming your questions about the topic. So don't hesitate to use the chat to ask any question that you want, and also to share any of your experiences regarding the topic that we're going to talk about. Also along with us is my colleague Enrique with uh, the Scientix account. He will be helping you with any technical problem you might have. So please write to him privately in the chat if you're experiencing any difficulties while attending this session. I also want to remind you to please turn off your cameras and your microphones during the talk and address your questions into the dedicated chat. So that's everything on my side. I will give the floor to the two presenters so they can start. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you, Thank you, Marina. Thank you very much for announcing us. Uh, I hope everybody can hear us. Uh, just to put out a PowerPoint. Ah, there it is. Uh, Yasmina Geyo, just to, to, to be sure of the pronunciation of the, of the name. So it's Yasmina Geyo right beside me. She will be the, the part of the speaker talking about inclusion in general, mostly in general. I'm here to speak about a little bit about uh, software solutions, software applications in uh, uh, open source, uh, with open source license or uh, no license. And uh, I'm not sure if you can hear us properly. I guess, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the sound is okay, no problem with the volume. Great. Because we will exchange microphone, it's on um, on a headset, so it will be a little bit like improvisation. We don't have a proper microphone here, but we it's good that you can hear us. Uh, first of all, we will try to be as much as um, conclusive about this because I know it's the afternoon. Probably you're coming here after lunch, and uh, maybe some of you. <laughs> are uh, into the afternoon net, so we will try to a little bit wake you up, bring some energy into it. And we also want to encourage you that during this session, which we would like to call more like a meeting in which we will present our idea from the conferences and some even experiences and some new information that we heard on the conference that we uh, participated in, uh, we want to encourage you to share your experience on this topic because we think it's very, very, uh, uh, it's not so mainstream at this moment. At, the, at least it's not in Serbia the mainstream topic. And it should be because of the opportunities it, it opens in the uh, educational sphere, especially working with uh, children with uh, learning disabilities. At the beginning, I would like also to say that we will try to be as much as politically correct in uh, addressing this issue. Uh, for example, we have some uh, terms that we use in Serbia which think that are uh, politically correct addressing these uh, inclusion issues, but uh, on English we are not sure if they are or not, for example, learning disabilities or uh, maybe difficulties, it's better term to use learning difficulties. I don't know, Yasmina is more of an expert on that, so maybe she will have some opinions on those, on those questions. And at the beginning, I will give the microphone to Yasmina because she will, she will make some remarks about an inclusion. Introduction. Introduction, yeah. Hello, first of all, 
I would like to say something about uh, inclusion in general, um, about social inclusion, about educational inclusion. There are many definitions of uh, that uh, word, that um, issue. But uh, at this time, I will mention one uh, done by UNESCO. And uh, it says that inclusion can be seen as a process of addressing and responding to the diversity of needs of all children, youth, and uh, adults as well, through increasing participation in learning, cultures, and communities. And uh, if uh, we speak about uh, educational inclusion, that means uh, changes and uh, modifications in content, approaches, structures, and strategies of learning uh, with a common vision that uh, covers all children of the uh, appropriate age, age range, and the uh, conviction that uh, it is the responsibility of the regular system, every system, to educate all children. So uh, if we talk about uh, inclusion, uh, we actually, nowadays, we don't ask the question uh, whether it's possible to create inclusive classroom. But the key question, by using uh, modern technology, but the key question is how to make sure that the classroom we create by using modern technology uh, is, adapted <laughs> is adapted to each student, to his or her abilities, needs, and other specific characteristics. Uh, if we don't uh, have um, uh, in our plans every child in classroom, we may uh, go to one direction which is not very good. And uh, if we do that, we can uh, probably make another kind of isolation, which is uh, uh, not something that we want to as a goal in our classroom. So uh, the use of uh, ICT in teaching should not be uh, directed uh, only to the individual, a student with disabilities and something similar. This can create uh, isolation as a consequence. So it is uh, preferable that uh, the software we use provides uh, support uh, for support in learning for all students and each student, including those who are different in uh, any way. Uh, and uh, if we ask, uh, pose the question, how can we recognize uh, inclusive classroom? Uh, there are some indicators that uh, we can check. For instance, uh, if uh, uh, the classroom is inclusive classroom, Classes should be organized uh, in that way um, so that every student is active and engaged in class activities, not just some of them. Uh, then there, are, there is uh, an active exchange among students and between teachers and students. Students feel accepted by peers, which is very important, and um, integrated in class neither isolated nor excluded, and teaching is um, organized to provide effective learning by peer or support or teacher support. And uh, at the end of the day, a student has a positive attitude for teachers and for peers and feels satisfied being in school, uh, feels fulfilled and happy and which is uh, uh, the most important thing. That's not the <laughs> That would be <laughs> all from Ms. Minet today's point. But <clears throat> we have a deal that, in any case, she can drop in in the discussion or if she has any remarks, as well as you, if you have any remarks, if you have any ideas, if you have something to say during the presentation, please do that uh, in chat and afterwards other users, other participants, and we as well can uh, 
look over and see if if we can use something. I will just get back for the two slides. Uh, <clears throat> these are the links for some very important documents that Yasmina was mentioned. She she made some uh, she pulled up some text from them. The first one is uh, Salamanca statement, a framework for action on the uh, special needs education. And the other one is the UN, uh, just, uh, yeah, UN Convention, Rights of the Person of Disabilities, especially Article 7 and Article 9 are uh, talking about uh, those points that we will make in the, that we will make in this uh, presentation. And going forward, first of all, I forgot something to say. There is, from slide to slide, there is a bunch of text now and then. So don't be uh, scared of it, please. Those text, that, that text is there because we, we would like that afterwards when the webinar is finished and uh, uh, the PowerPoint presentation goes to the repository, the other people who didn't have the chance to, uh, to participate in the webinar so they can understand what the topic was about and what was the main point of, the, of this webinar. So, yeah, there is a text from time to time as for this slide, for example. After everything Yasmina said about an inclusion uh, in general, of course, uh, we know how it is in our schools in Serbia and how inclusion is uh, um, <coughs> implemented in our school. So, of course, from time to time there are challenges. One of the challenges using technology in our classrooms, trying to bring an inclusive classroom by using those, that technology. Uh, it's not rare that we get in that trap that um, by using the technology we make even bigger mistake going on the other side with isol isolating our children uh, in their finishing the task only in the computers, not having the interaction between themselves or with the teacher. And uh, as Yasmina said previously, in the, she mentioned some of indi inclusive indicators, indicators of inclusion in the classroom and how can we know that the classroom is inclusive. Uh, one of the main points of inclu inclusion and the inclusive classroom is to have that interaction and to have uh, not only with the teacher, but also with the peers, uh, with other children, with other pupils. So when we were thinking about uh, how can we use technology, especially the free software, but not the free software, it's more open source software in the sense of inclusion. We find so many uh, uh, similarities between uh, inclusion itself and uh, in the free software, and that was the, the start point of thinking how to <clears throat> how to get the most from it, from most from the uh, oh okay, from yeah from the uh, open source software and some other things. First one I want to say we've uh, spaced out four aspects of adjusting teaching and uh, learning accordingly to the student needs using offline and online solutions. So we thought about it, what kind of softwares we can use in the classroom so we can make that classroom more, more inclusive. The first group is uh, uh, specific, specific applications aimed to support students who have learning disabilities. We will elaborate that a little bit later. The second group is applications that can be used as a teaching assistive technology. The third one would be the applications that are uh, designed for a wide range of target groups, but could be used uh, to adapt the, method, the methods and contents of teaching. And the fourth one is applications that are created for special purpose and needs of class, teaching units, group of students, or individual. So to elaborate, yeah, before elaborating everything, you know, when we, when we made the research by writing this, uh, this essay, I, I should say essay, some research points, we stumbled by something or someone 
And uh, there is a general question about, for example, um, people with autism and um, and geniuses, I guess. So there is a, a sad, curious case of Jacob Burnett. It's a kid that was diagnosed with autism when he was three years old. The um, uh, psychologist said that he would probably not learn even to tie his shoes, something that he is today joking about. And at 11 years old, uh, when he was 11 years old, he started writing down his own theory of relativity. So he's pretty much into the quantum physics now, as very young pupil. Uh, he had a, a speech on the TEDx team, and I'm really recommending to everyone to try to find that speech because it's very interesting and it can change a perspective of looking on how inclusion can work or do or how inclusion do not work in our environment maybe even the other point that he stated in his speech is more relevant and going to the to the group of the applications that are specially made for the group of students uh, when we were trying to find as much as uh, as more as we can find on internet uh, software solutions especially open source software solutions uh, that uh, that are made for the children with some kind of learning disabilities the most that we find are from for the children from the autistic group I mean uh, yeah from autistic group yeah, from the group of children with autism. Thank you very much. And uh, one very interesting story goes behind ABA Mathemat, which is a software you can find on the SourceForge. Uh, what's interesting about this software is that uh, it was made by the father of the eight-year-old autistic boy. Why? Because he uh, just figure out that there is no such a software that can help his kid learn basic mathematical uh, skills and he decided to use all his uh, his wife's teachers and therapist therapist experience to make this software so it's made after a model of applied behavior analyst which they used uh, to teach their child from when he was three years old and when he started going to school uh, beside learning uh, teaching him the basic uh, communication skills and uh, basic uh, writing and reading skills they tried to make a solution uh, make a software that can help their child to finally teach uh, mathematical skills to uh, what's interesting what, what is more most interesting about it is that that father on the introduction page of ABA math said that everybody is welcome with the suggestions how to develop further this software as well as they are very open to give a source code so the other people can try to modify it and to um, yeah to improve it in some case maybe even adapt it to some other specific needs of other children so uh, this idea this story for us was very very precious because if you think about the resources that we have around us and that we are not using maybe as much as we could parents I mean teachers of course then we have other um, experts that are also working on these issues and there are of course our children who are as much as help as they are but just by participating in everything we can see that uh, there is much space for improving or pro producing some uh, uh, solutions uh, software solutions or a specific group or individual or class is easy. 
uh, okay, I will get back to that a little bit later. The one thing that we will stress out as much as we could during this presentation is uh, that it's pretty much important to think about not isolating the child in this case, but uh, more working on inclusion. So how to do that, especially if you have a software uh, specialized for uh, using uh, for the use in uh, uh, for the children with a learning disability, a specific learning disability. Uh, in this case, we saw the solution in a little bit of modification, where uh, just a few pinpoints of, uh, uh, how to say, uh, maybe put some, mm, uh, sorry for this one, I will just have to explain it more simply. Uh, if you have an open, soft, open source software, uh, you can uh, modify it not only for the use of one specific group or individual, but put some uh, upgrades that can help other children from the class to use it as well, or to use it interactively between each other, you know, with a... Uh, 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 with giving a feedback to each other. But there is a lot, a lot of space of thinking about this because very often we we get to that trap and it's a fine line between uh, giving the child the uh, uh, means to get over the barriers, the learning barriers, uh, and isolating that child as well in the classroom. So the second, the second group of Applications are applications used to the teaching uh, assistive technology. Uh, we mentioned here just two of the programs, and we will not um, lose much time on this group of softwares. But eGuide the Dog is a software that is made especially for blind uh, pupils. Uh, unfortunately, the one thing that is uh, barrier uh, for our children is because the youngers are using it, it needs to be localized. For e-guide dog, it's uh, localized only for uh, Chinese. Uh, Chinese, um, it's localized on Chinese and on English. But the good thing about the open source, open code software, is that can be very easily translated. And uh, here we are putting one more part of inclusion, and that's uh, cultural inclusion. Uh, I don't know about the other countries, but I think it's probably the same as well. In Serbia, we are a very multi-ethnic country. So in that case, uh, by localizing some software solutions in uh, languages of ethnic groups in our country, we are doing the... In, yeah, we are going, doing the contribution to the inclusion much more further. Uh, and yeah, this is something that I would like to, to, to talk about a little bit more than the previous group. This is a group of applications that is designed for a wide range of target groups. So it's basically every software solution that you can find on the internet. You can uh, look at it as uh, some kind of uh, tool for uh, modifying some methods and contents of teaching in your classroom. For example, GPaint, which is a pendant of the Windows Paint, but it's an uh, open source program. Uh, pupils can learn more about shapes, regular, regular colors, uh, math uh, relations, mathematical sets, text, and so on and so on. But what is very interesting about this is with just a few modifications of this software, for example, if you put uh, some audio, audio, um, audio formats in it, uh, let me give you the concrete example. You have a child that is putting rectangle on canvas. 
if by the putting rectangle on the canvas there is a sound that will just pronounce the word of the geometrical um, uh, geometrical picture. Yeah. In that case, it would be easier for some pupils to learn all those terms, mathematical terms, and <clears throat> and to use them uh, and to learn about them and to use them further. Uh, even with colors, with shapes, with everything else, it would be much more uh, comfortable for pupils that have problem with learning uh, reading, writing, and uh, yeah, when we said writing, there is one more thing if you have the audio um, audio component in the program, then you can have also a text component that with audio could be followed the visual yeah a representation of that um, of that poem uh, of that term yeah of that word. Uh, but there is one more interesting point about this, uh, for example, especially about the G-Paint. When we talk about inclusion, we, we are, how do I say, very much um, forgetting about the pupils who are eager to learn further about some things, more, to get more information about some things. And uh, t talking about math, when we uh, were learning about uh, geometrical um, shapes, uh, it would be really easy to put a little bit more information on those shapes, mathematical information or some even interesting information about it by just putting one button aside in the program. And by clicking the button, child can have uh, access to some uh, some more information about that shape. For example, some mathematical formulas about how, she, uh, how he or she can, uh, uh, which they can use in their work further. I hope I was, I, I don't know if I was uh, cons consistent here. Yeah, okay. We'll try to go further. Yeah, the perspective of this. Oh, we talked about it, but I like this picture. <laughs> it's really about the perspective, how you look at things, and uh, how you will manage to use as more the most from something, especially when there is a open source software, a free software, Libre software. In case there is so much possibilities uh, to adapt them and to use them in the classroom, but. As I said, the one thing that we don't have is capacity for it. Um, many people do have a good idea as how to make some adjustments to some programs. For example, myself as a class teacher, I really know which programs I would like to see be adjust in a certain way so I can make it accessible to every student in my classroom. Unfortunately, I don't have a programming skills, so I'm not the one who can take the action in the hand and just make the change in uh, in that application. Yes, but that's the another point, the cooperation. And we had experience with the cooperation, which is the fourth group of applications, applications that are created for a special purpose and needs of class, teaching units, groups, and students of or individuals. Uh, lately, in Serbia, and I, I can just assume that in uh, in the rest of the countries, are this is also present. I don't know in um, how how often often is the case that people are doing this, but uh, every time when I get by t with some experts t talking about this kind of collaboration, and you will soon hear about it. Uh, everybody uh, have an opinion that it should be something that's in the system, that's a part of cu curriculum. So what we are talking about now is this. Uh, if we have a person with an idea but don't have a skills to, um, to work on it, not to work on the way as I cannot work on it because I'm not 
programmer and don't have those basic skills and knowledges about it, about programming, then we can call somebody who has. And for us, that was uh, high, high school students in the technical schools with their teachers who are anyway working on the programming, working on some other applications like flash animation and something like that. And in that, co in that cooperation, we have two examples from the classrooms. The one is um, Android application uh, uh, GLEP, GELP. I am sorry, this is a little bit of glitch here. I didn't write it down properly, but it's GELP. And it's made with the purpose. Uh, cool, the high school from uh, Zrenjanin recently got a student with uh, autism and they really didn't know how to include her in the classes, especially classes of chemistry. Uh, at the conference we saw the video in which they, uh, they, they shooted the class uh, before GELP and after GELP. Before GELP that, that girl, the, the pupil, was totally uninterested in the work they were doing there. They didn't know how to motivate her to participate in the class, to do something in a class, to to interact with the others. So she she was mostly moving around the class, but not interacting with anybody or doing anything. And then they started thinking how to how to include her a little bit more in the work. So. Uh, they saw that she really liked to use technology. I mean, uh, she was using mobile phone, she was using tablet very frequently. So they decided to ask for help from the other high school, uh, the, the one with the technical high school. And uh, with collaboration with them, they made uh, a software, Gelp which is very simple to use. Uh, their students are using it to make uh, the lessons in picture followed by audio streaming, uh, very simply made with cards or pictures so that um, the pupil, the autistic pupil can use it to follow the the process in uh, some uh, chemical chemistry experiments, yeah. Uh, there is a link for YouTube, on YouTube, for explanation about how they decided to make this software and how it works and even uh, how did that girl use it, but it's on Serbian, so only the ones who are I don't know, from Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, and maybe some other uh, colleagues who knows the serbo croatian Bosnian language can understand this. Unfortunately, there is no translation on English for this. The second uh, experience was when the teacher of the first grade in primary school have had a uh, pupil with a severe uh, um, severe uh, disorder of hearing and he, because of that he couldn't speak. He, w he really had the difficulties communicating with other pupils and uh, because of that uh, she and one other teacher from that school and the uh, teacher from the other uh, high school, technical school, which is also an ambassador here in Scientix, that's NADA. Uh, they got to this idea that um, high school students make uh, educational uh, games, for educational games, uh, in, as a flash animations. Uh, so, what do they get from it? I will not describe the class, I will not describe the procedure, how did it work, it's, it would take too long, but the point of the, the last group of um, software solutions, what did you get from it? The high degree of motivation of students in both schools, not only the younger ones who are playing and learning and interacting between each other all the time, 
but also the great satisfaction and motivation of the high school students who knew, had an idea that their work will be functional and will be providing some, uh, I, I can say, um, fun and help for uh, children to learn. Uh, yeah, it's methodically, of course, uh, it's customized and for every student. So methodolo the methodology was very, very. Uh, oh, okay. We are, we will get ready for the discussion. This is the end, to be honest. But have in mind this: if you have a students in a high school who are already doing something, especially. Uh, in the field of providing uh, some flash animations or some programming, uh, making some software solutions. Why not using that to make software solutions that are applicable and can make our classroom inclusive? Uh, that collaboration is price priceless. In that collaboration, we have an ABA mat where we have also uh, parents that can be one of the resource group for uh, making those kind of solutions. And uh, material is accessible to all. That is very, very important, especially for the free software, uh, so open software code. Uh, and the community work, of course, which is more like net educational, but more like... What's the time? Civic education, yeah. Okay. So many things to say. Perspective, we see the perspective in that collaboration through customization, upgrades, organization on creating software solutions that can greatly speed up all aspects of educational process and it significantly improves the status of a free software. So many, many. Uh, aspects, many goods can come from this. It's just uh, the thing of perspective, how we look at the things and what, uh, how can we use all the resource in this process. Okay, we will finish with this because it's time for discussion. We don't Milena, have you can still have uh, 10 more minutes if you want to, it's, it's fine. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, then. okay, thank you, Marina, sorry. Anyway, uh, the point is this, is, this this was a long speech, but to sum it up somehow in one word is why not use all the resources, internet resources in a shape of uh, open source programs that can be modified, adapted for the use in the classroom, and in that case, make it um, modified in the uh, methodology order that is, um, yeah, in methodology that can be, yeah, to make it as a teaching tool, but with the goal to make our classroom be more inclusive. And about the story of the father that make it, made the software solution about the story about the high school uh, pupils that made somehow that, that were participating in the process of making something that was used, not only made and then forgotten, or that was something they made and then they went to some competition and got the prize. But we saw that the biggest prize here, especially for the students who are working on this project, uh, making, uh, making software solutions for the younger ones, was the satisfaction they had. Uh, and because of that, the motivation was greater. And I guess that should be the main goal in this process, in the educational process, that we have good motivated students that are working for the greater good, for the tools that we can use uh, in the classroom to make it more inclusive. And uh, of course, there are case of university also stepping up and participating in all this because in the university we can find the most, um, the more educated students with the more knowledge, I guess. So probably the solutions would be 
even more complex, but better made for the for the use in the school. And I know I, I had something, I forgot to say something, and I will probably remember after the discussion starts. But yeah, I guess I guess we can start with the discussion if I bring any anybody had some similar you probably had an experience with working with the pupils who are have some learning disabilities and did you had some attempts in uh, making your classroom inclusive, more inclusive by using technology, by using some software solutions, or even making some collaboration with somebody else to, to, to find a way to include every child in the class? Uh, well, while we leave people a bit of time to think about this question, there was a previous question by Tulia. She was asking if you had any suggestions on augmentative alternative communication open source software. Uh, augmentative alternative communication open source software. Exactly. If I, okay, if I understood well, yeah. Uh, we have, for example, in our school, uh, in my uh, grade classes, because we have five uh, classes of the first grade. We have two pupils with uh, spectrum of autism and what we do, we are trying to use some software solutions we, which are not, unfortunately, are not open source softwares but are Android softwares that, uh, that are made for uh, improving communicational skills for the children. It's called, they are called uh, e-communicator, one is e-communicator, the other is communicator, and the other one is creation. The uh, creation team made it. Uh, to be honest, I had it in a, on this presentation, but I thought like it would be too much of a, of, of too much for the presentation to get even all those other uh, software solutions. But, the creation solution that we find on the internet and as an Android, for use on an Android platform, was to be honest, much better than the one we have in Serbia. And, uh, but the, the language is a little bit different. So there was, again, a point of how to use it. And when we thought about, uh, okay, give the child a tablet or give the child a mobile phone, the, the autistic child, uh, so he or she can learn uh, the name of the some terms uh, or some um, verbs or something else. Uh, we thought that it will get to the isolation of isolating that pupil so because that pupil will use only will communicate only with the, with the mobile phone or, and with the tablet. But very often we have a child that is using the tablet to communicate with somebody else. So he doesn't speak out sometimes the word, but he just press the, the, the term on the tablet in the program and answer, yeah, point, not point the picture because it's auditively um, uh, followed with audio uh, audio frame. So he just points on the picture, something similar to, uh, so yeah, sorry, just to see, because I'm not sure if I understood, uh, I may something similar to. Bye. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I'm getting the something similar to a reference. <laughs> Sorry about this, Tulia. There's I'm another not... there's another question. I don't know if you see it in the chat. It's from Dalibor. He says that teachers in Serbia, especially those who work with younger pupils, are not sufficiently familiar with this type of inclusion using technology. 
which is, yeah. in his opinion, necessary. So if if can if Jasmina can answer whether there is a systematic solution in terms of obligatory employees training, which is conducted by the Ministry of Education, regardless of whether it is open source or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, uh, the Ministry of Education uh, conducted uh, seminars about uh, inclusive education for, uh, for representatives for all schools in Serbia. And nowadays, uh, not specif uh, specifically uh, by using uh, ICT, but in general. So uh, the differences between schools are uh, reality. And uh, those differences, uh, they dictate um, uh, te uh, for teachers how to prepare uh, curriculum, how to make individual uh, uh, educational plans for each child. So it needs uh, time to be realized and time for practice. Uh, if, if we talk about uh, uh, social and especially educational inclusion, uh, this is uh, uh, what happens after teacher close the door of the classroom. So uh, every teacher needs a little bit of uh, creative uh, work and uh, to, to make effort to uh, adapt uh, what is already done and uh, what uh, what they uh, hear and learn from seminars and uh, uh, other forms of education to uh, adapt for uh, each classroom and it is not easy but uh, we have a network in Serbia supportive network for inclusion inclusive education and uh, if uh, there is a problem in school School can uh, contact uh, participants. Sorry, uh, uh, using and also about using uh, ICT and uh, to get support from the members of that network. But no systematic solution, system solution. Uh, yes, about system solution. No, since the system solution uh, specifically about how to use technology, not. Uh, in that way. Okay. Uh, Thanks for this answer. There's, uh, there's a lot of question, a lot of comments now. Someone is not agreeing uh, with Dalibor in this question. It says uh, it depends from teacher to teacher. There is another question from Laura, and she says that she thinks ICT is very useful, which is what you were commenting now. And she's asking whether schools can get any money or material for these pupils if there is not uh, uh, enough ICT on school. I'm assuming she's serving as well. Any other comment on this? Well, mostly, mm -hmm. yeah. The experience in Serbia is like this. If there is some kind of um, sponsor, like, for example, you have the uh, sometimes banks or a post office or some other firm that are changing their, uh, their equipment in their firm, their uh, schools can uh, address those firms and ask for uh, the, the older computers, for example, but no way of, what? or from projects, yeah, of course, but uh, there is possibility for schools to apply uh, with the project proposal and um, uh, to get um, assistive uh, technology uh, specialized for children with disabilities. And uh, uh, there are different levels of that uh, project and possibility to, to, to be involved and to, to realize uh, them from the top, uh, from the level of the regional level to uh, the level of school. But uh, uh, I mean the, that um, the problem is uh, not to get ICT uh, or uh, assistive technology. The uh, problem is uh, how to use it properly. And the uh, teacher needs to be educated and needs to cooperate and to develop horizontal learning between them and to share experience how to use that. 
Okay, thanks for answering that, qu that question. There's a couple more comments. Uh, there's one, I'm not sure I understand it correctly. It says, I'm afraid that pupils couldn't focus on ordinary school materials in further education, for example, in university. Um, did, no, I'm not sure either. I don't think. No, I'm, I'm not understanding the ordinary school materials part. If uh, R. Markovic can clarify on that, that would be great. And then there's another comment saying, I think that it's important to combine different tools. So yeah. um, I guess if you agree, if, if you want to comment on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it would be great to combine everything that we have and everything that we don't have even. But this is a story about what we can have in the future. It's a story about perspective. Because most of the time when we are looking for the solution of the problem, at this point we have an inclusive classroom. It's not a problem, it's something like a challenge for us nowadays. For me it was a challenge. I had uh, pupils from other speaking, uh, speaking other languages, not Serbian ones, for example. And my colleagues have even more greater challenges in their classroom with some pupils. But anyway, the point of this is uh, not only uh, to, to mix up tools or to use as uh, different tools as we can, but to try to figure out how to make those tools and how to make them um, as much as proper for every child, not only a child with learning difficulties or growth difficulties, but for every child. So, for example, the, the one, the last um, example from the practice, uh, the, the, the educational games, they were made for everybody in the classroom, not only for the, for the and especially for the pupil who has severe um, damage of the hearing, but everybody could play with those and was fun for those, especially for the, for the kid that had a little bit of difficulties with the writing and reading and hearing. So, yeah. Okay, there is another comment from Laura as well. She says that she sees teachers that are scared of using ICT. From this year, the pupils in schools are not allowed to use phones or iPads in the school, so she thinks that it's a step back in our thinking and that she agrees with education for teachers and examples for practice, which uh, is what you've been talking about. Mm. Yeah, mm. this is a great point because for, uh, I have an example from my school with most of the teachers are not allowing their pupils to use the, the mobile phones or even get the mobile phone out of their pockets in the classroom. and. Uh, I guess that the, that's the consequence because of those teachers not feeling very secure in the, that field. If you, if you have more capacity for working in ICT field, maybe then you will know how to manage the learning in the classroom using those tools. And that's the main problem maybe, uh, the uh, education of, for the teachers that we need to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to, to systemize. Yeah. I want to share with you a very interesting experience um, from uh, one class I visited. Uh, but uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, using uh, mobile phones is not forbidden if we use it in a proper way in the uh, classroom. Um, um, we uh, encourage teachers to do that. If they don't have uh, computers or um, another kind of technology. Uh, they can just use mobile phones uh, of their children. Every child, I think uh, more than 99 or something like that percent of uh, pupils, they have a uh, mobile with the um, uh, Wi-Fi access mm -hmm. yeah. connection. So um, I was present in the classroom when teachers said uh, now, take out your uh, phones and find something uh, which uh, some was information. Con some information uh, connect uh, connected with the topic that was on that class. And they are uh, willing to do that. They, they can, uh, they're, uh, in that skills, they're uh, more on higher level than most of us are. 
So they feel uh, very proud and motivated to do that and uh, to um, to create the kind of competition who will be the, far, uh, yeah, the fastest, the, one, to the fastest the one to find the information and to share with others. So sometimes it's not a question of uh, having or not have a, having equipment in the classroom. It is uh, more often a question of um, how, to manage it. how to manage it and uh, uh, the question of uh, creativity and uh, uh, um, for teachers uh, if they are ready or not to step out and uh, to use what they have already have. In regard to uh, this last thing that you commented, there is another question. It, uh, it's asking, uh, do you think should computer engineers should teach in school maybe a couple of hours a week, or maybe teachers could study with, could study with engineers? Uh, what's the question? <laughs> oh, okay. There's many questions. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, from the internet. In the school, maybe too. Uh, hello, everyone. It's my question. Uh, I think we study with engineers, specialty machine or computer engineers, because uh, they know uh, everything about uh, technology. Uh, and we, I, for example, I don't know uh, very much. So if we uh, study with engineers or maybe they can teach teachers, uh, it can be good for us, for education. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I think she's yeah. referring to the fact that, uh, well, there's a comment here that says it's not about the technology, it's about the pedagogy and the fact that teachers are trained in order to um, be able to use that technology. Uh, and yeah, I think that was uh, that was pretty much what she could uh, go for. There's another comment that I want to share that it's uh, that is from Er Markovic as well as he says that he thinks that is using too much technology in school could be dangerous. Um, if you have any comments on this one, this uh, should be the last question because we reached the time. But if you have any comments on this one, uh, about uh, danger, uh, in about being a little bit dangerous. Technology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, the the right measure is uh, that something that we have to think about. Uh, the right measure. Yeah, yeah, it's the, right the balance. Answer. The balance. Yeah. The ba okay. But uh, if uh, we use technology, we have to have something on our mind, and uh, that is uh, uh, teaching uh, how to to protect ourselves. First of all, to teach pupils how to um, to, s to be safe on the internet. And uh, even they know much more uh, uh, than most of us about uh, technology and uh, how to use it. They are not aware of uh, all the dangers, things that can uh, experience. So uh, we have uh, more experience in life. They have uh, much experience and uh, skills in uh, uh, that uh, word, another word, and uh, uh, we have to be aware uh, of that and to support them in going through that second, let's say, second word or parallel world. Okay. I have just one remark about that. Uh, in school that I've been working, there is a teacher, a math teacher, that is pretty much using GeoGebra and some other uh, software solutions for presenting mathematical processes in the class for the pupils. And pupils loved it. But at one point, uh, somebody approached her and said, you're using it too much. So what is too much and for whom? It's the part of the perspective. It's the, it's the question of the perspective. 
I mean, if, if you have a solution that can pretty much uh, be the better one in the sense of it can be a representation of the problem, mathematical problem, for example, in this case, that can be much more efficient than, for example, chalk and board, or uh, yeah, chalk and board, or some other, some other tool, then yeah, why not using it? Why not using it as much as you can if you see that works with the with the pupils? But the teacher that had that remark, that put that remark uh, in front, that it was like too much, was the teacher that was not using it at all. So sometimes we are thinking about it, but not seeing the other side or the other perspective of it. So yes, I. Yeah. So that's it. I just want to add something uh, that we all know about uh, new generations. Uh, they are born in a different world, uh, world of uh, modern technology. And uh, uh, I heard of something, uh, one sentence very important for me from one ICT teacher. Uh, he said, if pupils are not present in your classrooms during the class mentally, go to the place where they uh, spend their time. And that space is uh, internet or kind of a social network or whatever. So if we want to uh, go along to the time being and to be close to our students and to motivate them, we need to talk um, uh, with them uh, by using their language of communication. Uh, nowadays, uh, a little baby um, is um, very skilled how to to use mobile phone as much as uh, what is it called? Vajveshka. Oh. Uh. <laughs> for all the, the baby toys, I don't know. Or something like that. Mm. So this is the world that needs um, uh, for teachers to use as much as they use other tools to use uh, that technology. Okay, thank you both Jasmina and Milena for the presentation. I'm afraid we're going to have to close it now because uh, we reached the time limit. You, if you want to continue uh, talking to the people on the chat, that's fine, that can remain open, but uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to close the presentation now. So many thanks uh, everyone for participating, for uh, commenting on the chat, and of course to you both for the presentation. In the upcoming days, we will send you a follow-up mail with a survey, and then we will up call, upload sorry, the recording and the materials of this webinar on the Scientix resource this, uh, repository, so be on the lookout for that one. And again, thank you everyone for participating, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.